We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet, and our stop today is Plainview, Texas, where we get to visit with a new head coach for the Wayland Baptist Pioneers, Coach Marcos Inojos. Coach, first off, congratulations on the new gig as you have been named the new head coach there. That was uh, earlier this season. You were the interim for just a little while and then took over as officially the lead man. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Joey, very much. Um, uh, it's It's been a uh, whirlwind, to be honest with you. There's a, just so much involved in all of that. You know, I, I have a great admiration for uh, Coach Butch Henderson. Uh, he's, he has uh, probably been the, the most uh, Christian uh, example in coaching than I have ever had in the 32 years of, of uh, coaching. And so I have a great deal of respect for him. And it's an honor for me to uh, build on his legacy that that he uh, worked so hard to establish for the last 11 years or 12 years or, you know, uh, that first year that they came in uh, to to set the groundwork and the foundation for what we get to enjoy now, uh, to me, is uh, a blessing. And so I'm I'm I'm. Uh, very respectful of, of all of those years. Um, and I'm, I've been fortunate to work alongside him for the last eight years uh, as a defensive coordinator. And um, so there's, there, there's a lot there that I want to uh, build on, but uh, you know, anytime there's a change there, there, there's just a different way to go about doing it. Uh, and, and so uh, we, we, Got started in, in uh, November, uh, really, in our recruiting and, and in our uh, what until February that I was able to hire some coaches to fill in some spots uh, and to begin to grow as a program. We made some changes in our off season that were crucial, uh, um, you know, in the way that we worked and the way that uh, uh, we approached uh, work, um, and so. Um, Man, it's 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 been fast. It's been fun. Uh, been a lot of hours, uh, especially in recruiting. Um, when in football, when you hire somebody in February, that kind of puts you behind the, the eight ball, so to speak. Um, uh, but man, we've we've got uh, a little over seventy commits uh, in in uh, twenty three recruits and some transfers and we're excited about that uh we also uh have have uh, retained uh a great deal number of the kids that that we had we're we're off we young we graduated uh 22 seniors um you know and so we're um it's it's just been fast man i don't know that i've slept very much in between there but uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here uh, our, there's a great deal of excitement across the campus, not just because of me. It's just sometimes change does that. Uh, uh, so we're we're gonna we're gonna accept that and we're gonna move along with that that flow. Well, coach, I'm glad that you have had some opportunity then to to work with the recruiting and in, in the interim time, and then uh, as officially the lead man, and that's a solid number of of 2023 recruits coming in, or, or at least committed to the program right. 2022 two and eight the the record overall and uh the pioneers lost the last six games so i know that this the season didn't go the way that you all wanted it can you talk a little bit about 22 you were mentioning your time there with coach henderson and uh, bring us into where we are now okay well yeah definitely two and eight's not not where we belong it's not who we are as a program it's uh, it's not the caliber of kids and the caliber of coaching that we have on campus. And we're still very upset about that. Um, we think we can do better. Um, we, we've been working at it for, for quite some time now since the interim. Um, you know, I don't, it's, it's difficult to talk about uh, without, um, you know, uh, saying something negative about uh, previous leadership. Um, I have a great deal of respect for him, so I'm going to eliminate some of those thoughts uh, and just simply say to you uh, that we didn't, we didn't, as a staff and as a team, accomplish what we set out to accomplish, um, and and we we have made some changes. Uh, obviously, in in the uh, uh, offensive coordinator uh, 
position. Uh, Coach Henderson was the uh, play caller, and 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 he, he ran the offense. We've had uh, Anton Page on our staff for quite some time. Uh, in fact, he was one of the original coaches that Coach Henderson hired. Uh, very capable, uh, and, and has played at the Division One level. Has Division One contacts um and and his and his mindset uh regarding offense is of the division one caliber i have coached against him in high school um and and beat him by the way uh he hates it when i say that um and and i've coached against him on on our wayland campus every single day for the last eight years and i know the caliber of coach that he is and i'm excited to say that he's going to be our play caller um and i'm I'm, my attempt in hiring coaches is to surround him with guys that can help him organize and that can help help him uh run offensive practices without me getting involved and and really excited about that era because the kids have a great deal of confidence in him and uh and so do i and on the defensive side, I'm, I'm I've promoted um, my son, Marcos Sinojos Jr. Uh, the kid has played for me in high school. He's played for me at college. He's coached for me. He knows my system. He knows what I'm looking for. Um, and quite frankly, defensively, uh, in those two and eight seasons, um, we 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 were, in my opinion. Uh, we 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 were we played well enough defensively to win some fo- uh, football games, and I I think it's important that changes are made, but not to an extreme uh, in, on the defensive side. And so uh, I, I think that um, there were uh, many of those six games at the end of the season that we were in position to have won, um, and and just didn't accomplish it uh, as a team. We're speaking now with Coach Marco Snellhost from uh, Wayland Baptist and the Pioneers looking in to, and ahead to 2023 as we're previewing the season here on Midwest Sports Net. Coach, uh, let's let's look at the offense. You talked about the fact that you graduated a number of players uh, that uh, gave uh, a lot of time, put up some strong numbers for you. Young players coming back, and I look at names like Willie Phillips, a freshman last year for you, led the team in, in rushing, running back, Brian Ponder, sophomore quarterback, and and uh, you've got some new players coming in to fill the spot at wide receiver as well. So we start with the offense. Sure. Yeah, let's let's start with Brian Ponder. Brian Ponder uh, uh, came, came here from Navarro Junior College and um, has had some experience on the field. Um, had an injury last year uh, uh, and only played eight ball games, but had to put up some significant numbers as a, as a, a, a first year quarterback at Wayland. Um, I'm really excited about his leadership. I think there's a, a great deal of confidence from the uh, offensive personnel uh, uh, towards uh, Brian and really excited to see what that kid can do. He comes from very good stock. His dad's a head football coach, athletic director, uh, and and so he has high expectations of, of himself. Uh, you know that stems from that. Um, w- Willie Phillips is really an, an old freshman. He has been around. He he has been at Tyler Junior College. He's been at Midwestern. Uh, I, I coached. Willie uh, in high school when I was at Wichita Falls Rider. Now he was a freshman um, and he was on the offensive side and I was the defensive side. So, uh, but I'm very familiar with Willie's commitment. Um, and, you know, he, he uh, was behind some upperclassmen uh, and, and he was very patient. Uh, when he got his opportunity, he shined. Uh, and then we also have another running back out of North Shore, Damon Ford, who, um, also had some splash plays throughout the season, a true freshman. Uh, really excited to see what that kid can do. Uh, he he actually fits the body type of other conference players like at uh, Ottawa and Texas Wesleyan and, uh, and, and that the, the size is, is similar. Um, and so we're excited about the, that right there. And we also – have a uh, graduate transfer that that came in from Harden Simmons, um, and he's uh, wanting to be a uh, team chaplain in the Air Force. Um, and 
So the uh, Master of Divinity program here at Wayland is really what caught his eye, and he uh, has, has is coming. He's a, he's a 6'3", 245-pound running back that I'm really, really excited to watch him play. Uh, great character, excited to uh, have him uh, on our team. He's already talking about establishing Bible studies for our athletes, and, and that's something that really, really excites me. I want to win football games, but that is a that is something that's much more important to me. Um, we also have a tight end that that uh, had uh, had some splash plays throughout the the fall. Dylan Jordan is a great uh, character kid as well. Really excited to see what he can do with Brian Ponder and Willie. Um, and then we have three offensive linemen that are uh, have been with us for a while. And I'm excited to see what they can do. Sam Sicardo out of Coronado. Uh, Richard Ochoa is going to be our center. Uh, and then Mar Joe Rachel is our offensive tackle. I'm excited to see what those guys can do up front for Brian and for uh, Willie and the guys. Coach, it uh, looks like your, your offense is in good hands. Defense, uh, there were a number of seniors on the roster last year. You talked about the quality of the defense last year. Among those returning back um, in your secondary, Corey McCoy, and let's just go ahead and start right there. Yeah, Corey had an uh, um, excellent first year. He's a, he's a kid out of Odessa Permian. Really excited to, to see what that kid can do uh, as he matures and, and understands our scheme better. Uh, along with him, we've got another Odessa Permian uh, kid that we actually trans uh, or converted from a quarterback uh, to a free safety. His kid's very athletic. Uh, came to us from Eastern New Mexico um, and he ran the triple option there uh, and, and then decided to come to Eastern because of uh, different things and, and excited to see what he can do as he finishes out here. Um, but, but who, who makes our defense go as a kid from uh, Plainview high school, his name is Andrew Villa. He's played at the different linebacker positions for us. Uh, has has had a number of different um, uh, oh just success and in, in, in statistics at, uh, in tackles interceptions uh, sacks a kid the kid can play uh, he's also a coach's son and and really excited what to see what he can do this year um, and then up up front, um, Gabriel Tito is a kid that has been an all conference player for us. Extremely uh, strong young man, uh, quality character. Uh, people have a hard time blocking him. Um, I don't want to jinx him because we have some great offensive linemen in our conference, and I don't want to put a target on him, but he is definitely somebody that people are going to have to look out for. And we have some transfer kids um, also from Navarro, um, and, we, and we had a, a graduate transfer out of WT, and those kids are Jadarian White and Terrence Clark that I'm really excited to see what they can do at the linebacker position. They have the the height and the ability to 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 keep us where we have been defensively at the linebacker position. Traditionally, we have had some excellent football players there, and I I think these guys can fill in those spots. So excited to see what the that group or that nucleus of kids can can uh, bring about for us. Coach, you alluded to this a couple of times, and I want to mention this it is uh, from your bio page uh, when you were announced as the head coach officially. Uh, you said, my hope is that our program be family-driven, Christ-centered, and driven by a pursuit of higher education. Can you talk about that and, and what you bring to the table then? Sure. Uh, I, you know, like I, like I mentioned before, Coach Henderson uh, has, has been such a great example for me uh, from a Christian perspective of, of how you ba uh, balance, uh, you know, your beliefs in football and winning and, and how you use those tools uh, and who you are as a person. I identify myself as a Christian. Uh, I think that there's value in um, bringing a Christ-centered platform to uh, this profession. Uh, we, ha we have kids from all over the state of Texas and uh, come from different programs, some of which are Christ-centered and some of which are not. Um, and so to, to, to bring all of that together um, and, and to lead 
kids on, from the football field onto uh, the graduation ceremony is something that's uh, quite special to me. Um, and, you know, I just, I just want to continue building on that legacy that Coach Henderson has uh, already established in that foundation. And so, yeah, that's what I believe, and that's what I'm working towards. The season gets underway then September 2nd, as you all will host a couple of games at home. The season ends, actually, with a couple of games at home there in Plainview as well. But September 2nd, North American University, and then September 9th, Oklahoma Panhandle comes to town, and that is also a league game in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Tell us about your schedule. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's a complicated schedule. I, mean, I should say complicated. It's a difficult schedule just because the the, the quality of the opponents in our conference. Number one, and uh, number two, you know when when uh, when you when you bring in teams like uh, North American University and and. Uh, uh, Arkansas Baptist, who who were wanting to join our conference, uh, you know they they uh, it's going to test uh, who who we are and where we're at in our conference right away. Uh, we've had some quality ball games uh, against uh, Oklahoma Panhandle State. Those guys are just down the road from us. We we compete against the same. We're trying to uh, uh, recruit the same kids. Um, and so uh, I'm excited about that when we get them here at home. Um, and, you know, as we go down that, that, that conference schedule, we've got a lot of traveling to do and some back to back to back uh, and, and the longest travel. I mean, the, the travel to surprise Arizona is, and, and even to Pineville, those, those, are, uh, those are two long trips that you've got to be able to manage travel and, and uh, all of those just things that, that occur in travel and uh, and so uh, really excited about the opportunity to play the the, the quality of our conference um, and excited to see what we can do uh, uh, man you know when 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 you put everything together offensively and defensively and special teams I think we're somewhere in the middle of that pack um, and some of the top teams that traditionally have uh, been at the top like Ottawa and Texas Westland and Langston and Sagu, those guys, uh, you know, they, they're, they're somebody that we're uh, looking to, to uh, gain some ground on um, and finishing out with those uh, uh, with Langston is going to be pretty exciting for us. Uh, that's a, a, a quality opponent with, 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 uh, quality athletes and and so being able to say that you uh are competing against teams like that is is important to us well the pioneers again close out two games at home but they start with two games at home as well so folks in plainview will have the opportunity to get to to see wayland baptist a number of times this season coach marcos you know thank you so much for taking time with us today previewing wayland baptist for 2023 we'll follow you through the year and we just appreciate your time sir god bless you and again congratulations on the new opportunity thank you joey i appreciate you very much